Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3, Episode 4, um, Room for Growth. This video is uh, part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek Lower Decks, so I have to start with a spoiler warning for Lower Decks up to Season 3, Episode 4. If you have not seen up to this point, you will not want to watch this video, otherwise some things will be spoiled for you. So, I watched uh, Lower Decks and She-Hulk comes out pretty much the same day, so I watched, well, not pretty much, it comes out the same day. So I watched them back to back uh, when I normally watch them, and um, it's funny because this week, or today, uh, both episodes were, in my opinion, the worst episodes of their respective seasons. Or, I don't know, maybe I'm just, like, in a bad mood and not ready for the, the comedy, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think I'm in a particularly bad mood. I think if, if I was shown a funny episode, I would be in a good mood and laugh. I just didn't think either one of these episodes were pretty, any good <laughs> or any funny. Now, to be fair, I think the She-Hulk episode was worse than this one. That was that was by far my least favorite episode of the show, which I've liked. A lot of people have put that show down, but I've actually liked it up until this episode. Um, whereas with Lower Decks, like there were, I liked this a bit better because there were. So some jokes that I liked. There were some parts of the episode that I, that was kind of in, in you know ambivalent too. That I thought, eh, whatever, that's that's fine. But um, yeah, I think this is definitely my least favorite of of the season so far. Um, first of all, now if you're familiar with my channel at all, you might have heard me complain about the concept of having. All the lower deckers sleep in a hallway in bunk beds, and how I think that really does not fit uh, with Starfleet and um, you know 24th century ships. That every person should have their own individual room. Now you might call out to the episode Lower Decks and Next Generation where they clearly showed the ensigns sharing a room, but in my review for that episode, I also called that out as bullshit. <laughs> Especially on a ship like the Enterprise, where it has these luxury quarters, there's no way uh, they would have people sharing rooms. Now, I could buy it on shows like Enterprise, where the NX is the first ship in space. If they were all sleeping in the hallway there, that I could buy. Um... And even like a ship like the Defiant, because that's a warship that wasn't built for comfort. It was it was uh, like Starfleet's first warship that was particularly built for battle. So the fact they have bunks there with two people in the room, I buy that as well. Uh, but like a normal Starfleet exploring, meant for um, you know missions and exploring. Even you know a ship you might be like, well, that's the Enterprise, the Cerritos, the second tier. Even the, those second tier ships, like. I could kind of buy maybe if they had two people sharing a room, like, that's stretching it, but I could buy it. But having a hallway with everyone sleeping in the hallway is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Now, this is, of course, Lower Decks, which is a comedy show, and it does a lot of silly things for comedy, and you do have to suspend your disbelief more than other Star Trek shows, which... Which I usually do, like I'm, and I'm sure there's people screaming at me, like, "Oh, just to sp you're being dumb, just to spend your disbelief." It's just a comedy show, which I know I'm aware, but it's just a pet peeve that I carried over from that Lower Decks episode from TNG, uh, <laughs> that because that really bothered me in that episode that the the instance the two people were sharing a room, I think that's completely inconsistent with how the Enterprise was shown, and so to see that the Tiknati even further in this thing even though I know this it's just a comedy show and it's probably just doing it to be silly it still bugs me I still think it's stupid like I don't think it's particularly funny and the thing with this episode is the entire episode is based on that <laughs> and so right there I've completely 
um, antagonistic towards the whole premise of the episode, and it bugs the shit out of me throughout the because the entire premise is something I find annoying and stupid. <laughs> so um, that is a huge down point on this episode because the whole episode is about them trying to get a um, win this rig this lottery so they can get like uh, nice quarters and the upper decks and and have like quarters to themselves and then they've hinted i don't think they've ever like they've hinted at this rivalry between delta shift before i don't know i can't recall them doing a whole episode about them if, and if i recall previously they just popped up every once in a while but ooh delta shift and i was never interested in this rivalry it, it, it seemed it was something really cartoonish about it like I know, yes, this is a cartoon. I am aware, <laughs> but it's it's too much of like a kids type cartoon, um, and so I um, yeah, so I have no interest in that. The fact that the whole premise of this, where they were trying to rig, you know, let's take the whole sleeping quarters out of it, that this Delta ship was trying to rig something, and the, and the, so our lower deckers have to try to beat them to it and rig it first. It was a dumb premise. <laughs> it really didn't, and when they finally met up with Delta Shift, and they were all like being all friendly, and you know, I, it's so obvious what was going to happen, they were just going to be, and they're like, oh, we're all friends now, it's obvious they're going to be, ah, so on the suckers, and go off and try to cheat anyway. Um, so, yeah, and the things with them having to crawl in all these spaces in the ship, and they end up in these weird spots, and they, and there's so many, it's been retrofitted so many times, they don't know where it's going, like, I don't buy that premise either, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know, it was just stupid, especially when, uh, Boimler is, like, doing the Almantic Grab, Boim, and, um, and they turn on the deflector ship, and he almost got crushed. And then um, Tendi and Mariner had to strip and use their clothes as a tether to pull Bornla down. First of all, I don't buy that that worked. Those clothes would rip before <laughs> they would be able to save Bornla. But whatever. I mean, it is a cartoon. So that I, that I would be like, whatever. You know, suspension of disbelief, fine. But I didn't find it particularly interesting or funny. Uh, now, the parts of the storyline I did like, that I did find humorous. First of all, my favorite part of the whole episode is when uh, Mariner and Boimler started tripping. <laughs> that, that I did appreciate, and I, I did laugh quite a bit at that scene. And when Mariner was like, I'm an egg! <laughs> and, and, and Tindy was the only one not affected because she was a Ryan. And it's funny, I like the way they introduced it because uh, Tindy's like, you know, well, this stuff wouldn't have any effect on Orion's, but I have no idea what it would do to humans. And the next, next thing you know, like, you see Mariner's <laughs> eyes being big. And I love the animation in this. Um, so I thought that scene was funny uh, and great. Uh, and I did kind of like the fact that, um, you know, they were like, uh, when they finally got to the lottery in order to rig it, and they were like, oh, we're not going to do this, there's only one room available, we're not going to split up, so Delta Shift forever, and then they cut to Delta Shift realizing that they took the room but just split it between the four of them, and they're like, why didn't you just do that? <laughs> like, that was, that was kind of funny, but again, it involves a whole room thing, which annoys me, but I did still find that funny. Um, the thing with the holodeck with Dr. Ta'ana and, uh, Shax and doing, uh, you know, a black and white bank robbery thing. Oh, it did have another one of my favorite lines that I really appreciate. I loved when Mariner was mocking, um, the concept of money. Oh, here's these paper with no intrinsic values. Oh, let me withdraw. Like, I love that because this is roots uh, Star Trek in its moneyless future, which some more modern shows, particularly Picard, isn't very good at doing. Uh, and, and it shows them from their perspective of mock, because some of the writers of Deep Space Nine would mock the fact that um, the concept of Star Trek being a moneyless future. But if you think about it, uh, I would, I actually, that's one aspect of Star Trek I'm most on board with and agree. And I love how she particularly calls out money as 
it was not real. It's just something we made up, and it's just pieces of paper with no intrinsic value. And I love that. So that scene, I did appreciate it. That one line was one of my. That was my favorite line of the episode. But um. And but the whole thing with Tahana and uh, Shaq sort of like you know making out and telling their darkest secrets. Like I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really find that interesting or funny either. So I don't know. I was I just like the money list joke, but other than that, the the whole holodeck scene was kind of not interested. But anyway, <laughs> um, so let me talk about the other storyline, uh, which, believe it or not, I liked even less. Uh, all right, so the whole episode starts off with the Max masks joke, which I actually did like. I appreciate it because I actually liked that episode. I know a lot of people hate it, um, but I. Uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting concept. But it's funny. And Lower Decks always does this thing. And this is another thing where I suspend disbelief. And I've gotten used to that. They take these weird, crazy things that we see in Star Trek. And you know, act like it's a normal, everyday occurrence. And they happen all the time. <laughs> like They said this is like the third time in the month. that Oh, the ship. They, when they need to learn to stop touching masks. Like, this is a funny joke. Like, it's... Doesn't make any logical sense in real life. Obviously, this shit wouldn't happen. Well, not real life, but in the Star Trek universe, this shit wouldn't happen. Doesn't happen all the time, but it is funny when they play it off of that way. Uh, so I'm fine. This has been disbelief there. I'm fine with that because that was a funny joke, and I like them mocking that episode where she's like going around changing everything, and people were just sitting there. It's like, oh, that's my violin. I just tuned that. Like that was funny. So I did like that. But then when we get into the storyline of um them trying to relax this i it kind of knew how this would would this would play like the engineers would not like relax and they would keep trying to engineer and it, it happened exactly as i expected there was no surprise there was no humor in it to me it's, it's just like by the numbers as felt like things i've seen tons and tons of times before the you know the workers are stressed but they obsessed with their engineering so they just can't stop working and then that stresses the captain out even more um so yeah so i just found that uh, boring <laughs> really i didn't find it humorous at all uh and then the story and then the thing with um when they had the uh the person who was running this relaxation center having them how they got really upset and pissed off and like oh we got a full relaxation again this there was a tinge of um like it felt like a, a something it felt really fake inauthentic i think is the word i'm looking for it felt like some, is based off of TV show and movies and not how characters would actually behave in the situation. Now, granted, it's a comedy, but I didn't particularly find it funny. So I don't really... I just I found it dumb. I found it like it's just go leaning into a trope that's been done ton, tons of times before. So it doesn't... Yeah, so it doesn't even work as a comedy. Um, and when the the... You know, the person who runs the place was taking them on a tour and introduced them to the puppy room. And like, oh, for the more deviants amongst you, we have the kitten room. Now, there's my kitten. <laughs> um, you know, the funny thing is, so I was like, oh, I guess I'm deviant. I kind of, as a cat person, I was like, uh, I don't, yeah, no. I actually personally wouldn't find the puppy room relaxing. And I would love a kitten. In fact, I've been to a kitten room before several times, and watching this episode made me want to schedule an appointment for another thing. I find it one of the most relaxing things ever this is to watch a bunch of kittens playing. You can pick up toys and play with them in the puppy room, which to me would be much more boring. But I guess I'm a deviant according to this episode, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. They're just poking fun. I'm not taking it personally or anything, but it's just like... Um, definitely written by a dog person anyway <clears throat> so and and then so when um uh, what's not mariner what's her name 
Freeman, when Captain Freeman freaks out, and uh, and they 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 have oh do more puppies like that's that was I don't know I I see it as comedy but I just don't find it funny I don't I don't find it anything original I, I just I don't know maybe it appeals to some people I just didn't appeal to me and then how the engineers. Uh, built her this perfect stress machine. They relieved all their stress by doing engineering stuff. Like, a uh, duh. Again, that's obvious. It's obvious that we're, where they were going with that. And then when um, it perfectly cured her, but then the people who at the facility was like, Get rid of that! Obviously they were going to do that because they were like, Oh, this is going to put us out of business and no one's ever going to come here again. So, of course, they're going to destroy the machine. Like, I don't really see the interest, the intrigue, or the humor in that. It's just like, a duh. I don't know. <laughs> Again, maybe I'm being a sourpuss on that, but I really didn't like this story. Like, the masks uh, opening scene is pretty much the only thing I liked about this. The rest, the whole relaxation storyline is a wash for me. Um, so, <laughs> uh, my rating uh, for um, Room for Growth uh, out of 10, I'm gonna give this a 6. Um, good. Um, I think it gets in a positive rating for me because there were a few jokes that I did really appreciate, such as the hallucinations and such as the joking about money having no intrinsic value. I fucking love that. And, and um, the, um, the whole masks opening sequence. That was funny. Um, but, so because of those things, I, I get, it saves it from getting a negative rating because I can't really give it a negative rating because I love those jokes so much. So I'm going to give it the lowest positive rating <laughs> I can because the rest of the episode was pretty much... I mean, it wasn't terrible. I didn't think it sucked. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it just was bland and not funny and uninteresting. So, and, it, well, of course, the whole thing about the room situation does irritate the hell out of me. But... As I said, those other jokes are still funny. And I've I've come to accept this in Lower Decks. Like, I've just, you know, I've even though it bothers me and I think it's stupid, I've come to accept it and roll with it. But when they focus on it, it's really, it's harder to ignore it. But anyway. <laughs> so that's it for my review for Room for Improvement. Uh, or Room for Growth, sorry. And I shall be back next week and every week thereafter to talk about Star Trek Lower Decks. So be sure to check out my channel. Also check out my channel as I cover many more shows uh, such as many more Star Trek shows, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.